The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon. I will exercise my art so. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now, this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. 
killed there. Dr. Gillespie. Mm. Hello, Wheeler. We're just leaving on our vacation. Thought we'd stop in for a minute and say goodbye. I didn't thank you for taking over for me during the operation the other morning, Dr. Kildare. I'm really very, very grateful. Oh, I'm glad I was able to help. What happened, son? You performed that operation many times. I don't know. I just suddenly couldn't hold my hand steady. Hmm. What were you doing the night before, Wheeler? Oh, I was around. What time did you get to bed? I didn't get much sleep. Uh, you want to tell us about it, Bob? There isn't anything else to tell. Hmm. I see. Well... Then I guess there isn't anything more to be said. You know, this can turn out to be a very serious matter, Bob. For your own good, you should be willing to talk about it. To, to present whatever excuse you have. I don't have an excuse, Dr. Gillespie. I don't think there is any excuse for what happened in that operating room. I appreciate your concern more than I can tell you, but I just don't have an excuse. Dr. Carew is going to fire me, isn't he? Well, he hasn't made up his mind yet. I certainly hope not. If you two are going to catch that train, you'd better get moving. Hmm? Oh, all right, Molly. Well, goodbye, Bob. We'll see you when we get back. Bye. Have a good trip. Uh, good luck, son. Uh, worried about that boy. I had your bags taken down to the front door, and there's a taxi waiting. Where are your guns? Oh, they're with our bags. Now, for heaven's sake, don't shoot each other. I won't shoot him as long as he behaves himself. No, as a matter of fact, our primary object in going hunting isn't to catch anything anyhow. It's just to, just to get outdoors. Oh, is that so? You listen to me, Kildare. You're talking to one of the best shots in this part of the country. You'll take care of him, won't you, Dr. Kildare? Oh, I'll do my best, Molly. Take care of him. Say, do you think you're talking to a child, Molly? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I do. Ah, oh, go <laughs> bury your head in a tub of formaldehyde. Why, Dr. Gillespie, that's the nicest thing you've said to me in weeks. Uh, <laughs> Have a good time. <laughs> Thank 
get it, all right. What's that? It's an inflammation of the larynx and the trachea. It's caused by a germ similar to influenza. It closes the opening to the larynx, causing asphyxiation. I'm going to have to perform a tracheotomy if your son's to live, Mrs. Ritchie. I haven't any instruments. Let me think. Yes, I have a hunting knife in my pocket somewhere. Ah, here it is. Have you a pair of tweezers? Yes, yes, I have. All right, just get me some alcohol and quickly. We'll operate with what we have. We'll have to work without an anesthetic. What are you going to do? I'm afraid I'll have to cut an opening in the throat so he can breathe. Just keep him very quiet, Mrs. Ritchie. He'll be all right overnight. By morning, I'll have the proper tube from the hospital to put in his throat. I'll be back to see him later. Oh, Dr. Kildare, I'll never be able to thank you. Oh, don't thank me. Just thank God that we got here on time. Come on, Dr. Gillespie. Let's go over and talk to the people in the meeting house. Hmm? Please, 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 quiet now, please. Listen closely. And I'll try to explain it to you all at once. Your children are suffering from an intertype virus. It's easily spread from one child to another on handkerchiefs and books and pencils and drinking cups and any number of ways. Now, we're going to try to isolate children who have been exposed from children who have not been exposed. In the meantime, you must sterilize that boil all your eating utensils. Keep your children at home and watch them closely and... And uh, notify us immediately if any of them become ill. Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gillespie, you're needed right away on the other side of town. The Martin child. Oh. Oh, we'll come right away. Well, good morning. What are you doing up so early? Oh, good morning. I was just sitting here on the back steps, watching the, the forest come to life. It is going to be a fine day. Oh, beautiful. You know, when I was a kid, I used to sit here and pretend I could see Indians slipping from tree to tree. Old Daniel Boone riding along on his horse, Davy Crockett with his bear. Sometimes when there was a crack of thunder and a flash of lightning, I could almost see Paul Bunyan striding across the sky. In those days, I was going to be an explorer and lead expeditions to new frontiers. <laughs> well, it seems to me the scientists and doctors are the only real explorers left in the world today. And the frontiers of medical progress are the last real pinnacles left for man to conquer. You're prejudiced, of course. Oh, yeah, sure, of course. Medicine is my whole world and my only really important world. Everything else must take second place. You know, sometimes I think it means more to be a doctor in a town like this than in a big institution like Blair General. Uh, 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 uh. Now, now, Jimmy, don't go getting any fool ideas like that. Well, there's so many doctors at the hospital, and not one doctor here. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see that if there'd been a doctor last week, five children might be alive now. Hello there. Hello. Why, it's Molly and Dr. Wheeler. What are you two doing here? Good morning. Bob and I came to the rescue. We've got penicillin, instruments, oreomycin, and everything else. Oh, well, that's for another doctor, and I volunteered for the job. And I convinced Dr. Carew that if there was an epidemic, you certainly needed a nurse. Oh, we certainly are glad to have you both. Oh, thanks. Is it a bad epidemic? Oh, pretty bad. These kinds of cases are difficult to handle because a child seems perfectly normal and well, and then suddenly... A few hours later, he's ill. However, with penicillin and oreomycin, I, I think we'll be able to check it fairly rapidly. Mm. I'd like to have a look at the patients I operated on last night right away. So what can I do, Doctor? Mm, would you be willing to wait around here, Bob, in case any emergencies develop? You bet. Well, I imagine you'll want to go upstairs and rest for a while after you drive anyhow. Well, I would if I'm not needed. And I would like a long, hot bath. Well, you just go right in and holler for Mrs. Kelly. She'll take care of you. Uh, may I borrow your car, Bob? Help yourself, sure. Thanks. Well, come on, Dr. Gillespie. Let's get to work, huh? Oh, there you 
are, Larry. You're going to be up in no time. Now. I'll never be able to tell you what this means to me, Dr. Kildare. Oh, I know what a boy like that must mean to a mother, Mrs. Ritchie. Well, now, who on earth is that? Molly. Oh, please, please come at once. Bob and I went out on the case. It's a little girl, and she's in pretty bad shape. She needs an emergency right away. Well, Doctor, we can again. He asked you. me to get you as quickly as possible, Dr. Kildare. I, I don't think he feels he can perform the operation. All right, come on. Bob, everything's ready for you. You, you want me to operate? Yes. I want you to save this child to life. You can do it, Dr. Wheeler. You can do it. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, I don't mind saying I'm tired. Bob, oh, that was a fine operation. I'm proud of you. It goes for me, too. Well, thanks. Thanks for making me do that operation, Dr. Kildare. How do you feel now? Well, I feel fine. Well, I'll feel even better after I have that bath I thought I was going to take three hours ago. Me too. Well, see you later. Call me if I'm needed. You know, Dr. Gillespie, I've got a theory about that boy now. Huh? You're going to have a talk with him. But first, I, I think you and I had better canvas the village and take a look at every child here. We can give a shot of penicillin to each one that shows even the slightest symptom of anything that might turn out to be disease. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> Now, who in the... Oh, no, oh. it couldn't be. Hello, you dear fellow. No, it is, Carew. Hello, you dear fellow yourself. Surprise. You certainly are a surprise. Yeah. I knew you'd be overjoyed to see me when I heard about my two fellows pitting their strength against an epidemic without their leader. I knew my place was here in the front lines beside you, and so I came. Thank you, Dr. Carew. Spoken like a general. Yes, wasn't it? Uh, oh, by the way, Dr. Carew, I, I, I'm glad you're here. I I want you to know I just watched Bob Wheeler perform a tracheotomy. And he did a very fine job, didn't he, Dr. Gillespie? He certainly did, for well, a fact. Well, even so, that hardly alters the fact that the other morning he went to pieces and I'm... I think I know why now. I'm not sure, but I think I do. Why... Well, let me have a talk with Wheeler, and if my reasoning makes any sense, I'll tell you all about it. Fair enough. Now then, what can I do to help? Well, we were going from house to house examining children. Then I shall accompany you. I, too, shall risk my life. Bravo! Jimmy, why don't you talk to Bob while Dr. Carew and I make the round? Oh? You don't need me? No, no. Dr. Carew will give me every possible assistance. I will, dear chap. I will. All right, I'll talk to Bob. Bob, uh, before that tonsillectomy the other day, you had chills, didn't you? Why, uh, I'm not sure. Did I? Yes. Have you been having trouble with uh, migraine headaches? No, no, I haven't. Chills? Hypertension? I'll bet if I took your blood pressure right now, I'd find it was high. Emotional reaction, lack of confidence, and depression. All the symptoms are there. I don't agree that all the symptoms are there. Why should you try to deny it? All right. Suppose we have Dr. Gillespie examine you and see what his diagnosis is. No. No, his diagnosis would be the same as yours. I've tried to hide these attacks for months now, but there's no use any longer. What do you want to hide them for? Well, I was afraid Dr. Carew would think I couldn't be depended on. He dismissed me from the hospital. Oh, but that's ridiculous. Is it? 
How many times have you heard Carew say there's no room at Blair General for a man who can't pull his load? Well, he meant that for people who are lazy, not people who are ill. Ah, oh, come on. When did you start having these headaches? While I was an intern. First, they weren't very serious, and I thought they were caused from studying and losing a lot of sleep. Later, I realized they were migraines, and I began giving myself treatments. What did you use? Ergotamine tartrates. Did that help? Yes. Hadn't had an attack for almost six months, until the other day in the operating room. I see. This morning, I thought I was getting one when I found myself faced with that tracheotomy. But it didn't materialize. Well, migraines can be psychosomatic. You can bring on an attack sometimes simply by fearing that you're going to have one. Uh, you should never have tried to prescribe for yourself anyway. You should have come to one of us. Dr. Kildare, isn't it true that sometimes a doctor is the hardest person in the world to persuade to see a doctor? <laughs> you're probably right about that. I know that many types of migraine are difficult to cure. And as I said, I was so afraid of losing my position at the hospital, I... Bob, I think your type of migraine can be cured. Of course, I'll have to examine you thoroughly, but you show all the indications of having the type of migraine that's caused by a lack of histamine. If I'm right, we can cure you permanently with injections. Yes, I read about it. It's a new treatment. They've had some wonderful results with it. Now, how about it? Will you put yourself in our hands, Bob? I certainly will, Dr. Kildare. Good. You want to stay at the hospital permanently? Well, not forever. What I'd really like to do someday is to get a little town of my own. Oh? Well, how about this one? This one? Oh, yes, indeed. Here's a town that really needs a doctor. And you're a doctor that needs a town just like this. You think they'd have me? Oh, they'd welcome you with open arms. Well, let's find out. <laughs> Blair General will miss you. I was very happy indeed to learn from Dr. Kildare that the incident in the operating room was due to illness and not to negligence. By the way, uh, Dr. Wheeler is going to practice right here, Dr. Carew. Yes, I know. And I think that's very commendable of you, Wheeler. Very commendable indeed. Well, thank you, Dr. Carew. And as for you, Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gillespie, I must say you men have done a magnificent job. Magnificent. You are a credit to Blair General Hospital. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, now, now, don't twit me. I know how you feel about flattery, but I must pass it out when it is merited, and you have merited it. The epidemic is checked, the emergency is over, I return to town well content. Now, have your holiday, enjoy yourself. We only have three days left. Do we still have to be back at the hospital at nine Monday morning? Well... You haven't had much of a rest, have you? Yeah. Tell you what. Don't come in until noon on Monday. Thank you. Don't mention it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Molly. Bye. Bye. Uh, well, you haven't got much time to hunt now, have you? <laughs> How long are you staying, Molly? Oh, Dr. Carew was very generous. Mm. He said I didn't have to be back at the hospital until tomorrow morning at nine. The old... Fossils. And my train leaves in half an hour, so I'd better get my bag. Oh, why didn't you drive back with Carew? That is a fate worse than death. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Oh, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to hate to leave. I don't blame you, Dr. Mm. Kilday. Come on, both of you. Let me show you around my town. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. We'd like very much to have you show us around your town. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Nice country. Like to come up here sometime for a vacation. 
We didn't have much of a vacation at that, did we? Wouldn't you think that old goat, Carew, would have given us a few extra days? Mm, Carew never gives away anything except advice. You know, as hard as we worked all week, I still feel as though I had a rest. Oh, so do I. I guess that comes from living in fresh air and hiking and No all that... food ever tasted better, I'll tell you that. Mm. I was really hungry. Well, I wonder what's waiting for us back at the hospital. I don't know. But knowing Carew, I guarantee there'll be plenty of work to do. <laughs> well, there's no rest for the wicked, Dr. Kildare. Quite so, Dr. Gillespie. Quite so. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Gene Holloway and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Eleanor Audley, Ted Osborne, David Ellis, Isabel Jewell, and Ken Christie. Dick Joy speaking. <laughs>